Now something to get you in the holiday spirit. It's called Cirque du Soleil. It began with a small band of performers on the streets of Quebec, and three decades later, 90 million people in 200 cities have gone to see this spectacular circus. At any given time, 20 shows are wowing audiences around the world, and one of them is here in Southern California. I wondered what goes on before the music, lights, and magic begin. I got a rare chance to go backstage at Cirque du Soleil's dazzling show called Kuza. Wrapped in the soft embrace of morning mist, the great striped tents of Cirque du Soleil sit. Quiet, deserted, waiting. Inside, no one to laugh or gasp or cheer. But look a little deeper and you'll find signs of life. Performers, artists hard at work, rehearsing their craft, refining their acts, preparing for the next show. 50 feet above center stage in the deserted Big Top, trapeze artist Yulia Korostoliva is practicing. Yulia comes from Moscow, and Cirque du Soleil is the last place she expected to end up. My background is gymnastics, so after all, I had skills already. But I never, ever, ever in my life wanted to be in Cirque, ever. Eight years ago, she went to a Cirque audition on a whim and became part of the working troupe, performing group dance and acrobatic numbers. But the muse of the soloist called to her, so she quit the Cirque to study trapeze. It wasn't easy. I was struggling for eight months in cold Montreal, no job, and I cannot work officially, I don't speak French. Like, a lot of things weren't that pleasant, but, and then I got lucky. Like, I have the best job in the world. This is what I wanted for a couple of years, and I risked it all, and I got it. And risk is still part of the game. I fell maybe three, four times in my trapeze career, which is about a year and a half now. Every time I go on stage, I don't know if I'll, if I'll stay on it. But Yulia is motivated. You should never forget, it's like 2,500 people, and every time I go and I'm not in the mood, uh, people pay money, people save money to buy tickets, and I feel very ashamed if I don't give 100%. Yulia loves life as a Cirque soloist, but she's practical and has a comprehensive retirement plan. What happens to trapeze artists? What happens to trapeze artists as they get older? They marry millionaires. <laughs> Wander deep backstage and you're in a place called the Artist Tent, just behind the big top. It's here that the performers warm up, train, and continuously polish their acts. For example, take one strong man and give him a long aluminum pole with leg spaces on it. Have another guy climb to the top and stand there. Then add a springboard and a woman. And allow the forces of gravity, velocity, trajectory, and balance combine in one explosive moment. Sometimes it all works great. Sometimes it doesn't. It's also back here that Kuza's characters come to life under the sponges and brushes and paints of the makeup artists. Florence Cornette is the makeup designer for the show. There are 50 artists on Kuza and at the beginning the target was to I have 50 different faces. Florence is here today to do makeup for a Kuza photo shoot and to do quality control. She does that every couple of months because on the road, artists do their own makeup. I create the makeup team in Montreal, uh, teach them how to do the makeup, and they do the makeup each, each night. Her favorite character? Yeah, the trickster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite, the trickster. Why? Oh, because it was one of uh, our uh, more interesting characters. Native Angelino Mike Tyus stars as the trickster, Kuz's charming and mysterious guide. My mom had a little problem with it. I, I, I felt it. Like, she's like, ooh, this is kind of dark. But 
It's a dark character that definitely plays on on, on a lighter note. Um, so he's not necessarily a demon or a devil, but he's just uh, he's stuck between in the gray area between light and dark. Uh -huh. But um, your mom goes, "That's my nice son. Yeah, yeah. he's not really mean. <laughs> he's not mean. He's not mean." Exactly. Back under the big top, the high wire guys have taken to the stage to rehearse. They work on two inch diameter steel cables, one at 16 feet off the ground, the other directly above at 27 feet. Angel Quiros, that's him in the blue t-shirt, is a lifelong fifth generation circus performer from Spain. He's been a juggler, a tumbler, and a clown. One thing that we liked to do the most was the wire. You liked it yes. the most? It, more, the most difficult and dangerous, but also the one that we liked. It. And all those other guys up there on the wire with him? His brothers, a cousin, family. That's, it's good to work with your family because you trust each other, each other. And um, you know if your brothers that day doesn't feel very good or something happened, you know. So it's, it's better that way. Now, let's get back to that most dangerous thing. Uh, I want the public to see, the audience to see um, that what we do is very, very dangerous and involves many, many hours, many years of practice. And it's like a, like a, a bullfighter, you know? Right, but bullfighters work ground level. In 2000, Angel made a mistake. I fell, I grabbed the wire, but I mean, I fell. <laughs> so I broke many bones in my back. And, uh, Gosh, but you're all healed up and back? I am back, yes. Back and focused as ever. At the same time, our act is happy, you know? We make it happy so people can enjoy the act. So they have fun watching us. And part of that fun is Cirque's extravagant costumes. How big a wardrobe would you think a cast of about 50 needs for a show? Well, there's about 1,500 costume pieces featured in the show that doesn't include our backups. And it's just such a variety of costume pieces because you have to fit with the theme, but have the ads have their own individuality. It's pretty amazing. Ooh. Oh, this is heavy. Yeah. Colette Livingston is Kuza's queen of costumes. Her carefully arranged rows, racks, and cases testify to the importance of her department. The right color thread? Covered. More feathers? Got them. Extra shoes? No problem. Have you ever had a wardrobe malfunction during a show? Uh, actually, we've had three this week. Um, what happened? The trickster is incredibly flexible and is doing all these new moves and he shredded the crotch of his pants three times this week and you have to have it fixed by the next time it goes on. So we're pretty good at fixing any sort of malfunction. How do you keep these things clean? Well, they're all washable pretty much and they, they come in different pieces. There's hand wash, there's only a little bit of dry cleaning which is very useful. But when you have artists that sweat so much, do so much physical activity, it's really important that you can make sure all the costumes can be washed. Right outside her door, a row of washers and dryers do their duty. Actually, stepping out the back door gives you a totally different perspective. Cirque du Soleil is more than the big top that the public sees or the rehearsal tent that they don't. It's something closer to a small, self-sustaining village. It takes more than a hundred people to keep Kuza on the road. Everything from electricians to cooks to stagehands. This location itself covers almost four and a half acres. When Kuza hits the road, it takes nearly 55 18-wheelers to carry the show's more than two million pounds of gear from city to city. It's a massive logistical mission. Back inside, we met a woman with a very different mission, Melanie Lalonde, the show's artistic director. She makes sure that Kuza stays on the creative straight and narrow. What I'm looking for is rhythm and timing and if I'm integrating new artists, how they're folding into the picture and process. Uh, so there's, there's many, many things I'm looking for. I'm looking at the lighting and the sound, so I'm also keeping an eye on the technical aspects, like artistically, is it still all going well. Melanie watches the show two or three times a week with a critical eye for detail. 
Uh, what I look for in a performer is something a step beyond the high level expertise that you're used to. I'm looking for like more guts and soul, something that transmits beyond just their skill, but that's going to like kind of reach out to me and, and pull me in. I'm looking for them to connect me to them. And nothing connects with Kuz's audience better than the wheel of death. This act, a 1,600-pound combination of dual hamster wheels circling a central pivot point, is a highlight in a show stuffed to the brim with exhilarating moments, all of which are performed practically in the laps of the audience. With the completion of today's practice session, it's showtime.